To begin this evening, I would like to invite Chief Gibby to give a short traditional prayer for intercultural understanding, a successful Olympic truce, and for peace. Chief Jacob, please. Good evening, everyone, Your Excellency. It is indeed an honor to be here this evening to share a short prayer. Our protocol from where I come from is to pay respect to the host community. In this case, there are many tribes from this area, too many to name, but just know from our hearts, from the Squamish people and the Four Hosts First Nations, that we give you our respect and praise. So I'd just like to ask you to pray in your own way. We all have different ways of praying and for many different things. Tonight is a special event and thanking the uh, uh, United Nations for passing the resolution for every moment, every minute, every hour, every day that good things happen to the people around this world are always good things for all of us collectively. But Creator, we thank you for bringing us here this evening to share in a wonderful celebration that hopefully your hands, O oh Creator, will lead us to a peaceful world, not only for the Olympic Games, for all times to come, on behalf of all of our children and the future generations. O oh Creator, we thank you. As we all know, the Secretary General has been a strong supporter of sport as a way to promote peace and development. And we're also very pleased to have with us this evening his special advisor on sport and development, Wilfried Lemke. Secretary General, may I invite you to say a few words? Monsieur l'Ambassadeur John Mangney, Monsieur le Premier Ministre de Colombie-Britannique, Mr. Forlong, CEO of Vancouver Organizing Committee, Monsieur le Secrétaire, Secrétaire Parlementaire Deepak O'Brien, chers invités, chers amis, Mesdames et Messieurs, je suis très honoré de dévoiler cette belle sculpture dédiée à la trêve en honneur des Jeux Olympiques et Paralympiques Paralympique d'hiver de 2010 qui se tiendront à Vancouver. Je suis heureux de savoir que cette sculpture restera à l'ONU un mois avant d'être envoyée au village olympique. C'est un symbole dynamique des liens qui existent entre les Jeux olympiques internationaux et notre mouvement mondial pour la paix. Comme vous le savez peut-être, je me suis récemment rendu à Copenhague pour le congrès olympique. Il y avait de l'excitation dans l'air en raison de la sélection de la ville qui accueillera les Jeux de 2016, mais aussi un enthousiasme palpable pour l'action générale du mouvement. Notre partenariat est utile et de plus en plus étroit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also celebrating the General Assembly's adoption yesterday of the Olympic Truce Resolution. I thank Canada for its initiative in bringing us this sculpture and for introducing the resolution, uh, which enjoys more support than virtually any of the hundreds of other measures passed by Assembly each year. Cynics criticize the truth resolution, saying it is just words on paper. But we at the United Nations know better than anybody else. Although we have not yet succeeded in halting all fighting during the Olympic Games, we have negotiated many meaningful truces over the years. These pauses in fighting save lives. They make it possible for humanitarian workers uh, to reach people in need. And they open up diplomatic space to negotiate lasting solutions. A truce is a prelude to true peace. I met the Vice President of IOC this afternoon, and I assured him that as, this, as we are closing 
uh, near the Olympic Games, I will make my own statement asking all the world to observe this Olympic truth. So it is great expectation that I unveil this new truth sculpture. I hope that when athletes meet in Vancouver in 2010, fighters will lay down their arms. Then the Olympic Games will have one clear winner, our world as a whole. Thank you very much. I would now like to invite John Furlong of the Vancouver Organizing Committee to hand the torch to the Secretary General who will receive it on behalf of the international community for its symbolic send-off to Olympia tonight.